Hello! We are back again after a long time, and today's tutorial is about face swapping with Roop. What is Roop? It's this little new tab I have right here at the very bottom. Okay, more details about it later. First, let's see what Roop is. Roop, even though its name is odd, is a face swapping algorithm. It was first released as a separate Python program where you provide a face, you provide an output video or GIF file and then it takes each frame of the video and replaces the face in the video with the image we provided. So you get results like this and this. Now before that, if you are a beginner in Stable Diffusion, or you are someone who needs to learn Stable Diffusion XL and think Automatic 1111's web UI isn't the best for it, our team is doing a Stable Diffusion XL course right now. The UI we use for this is Focus, a web UI with a really simple interface, but with some complex powerful mechanisms within it. Using this UI, I will teach you all of the basics of stable diffusion, including text to image generation, image to image generation, models, LORAs, how they work internally, face swaps, pyrocanny models, and many more. All right, back to Roop. A little time ago, Automatic 1111's web UI received its own Roop extension, and that is what you see here. The link for it is in my description. Here you can see details about Roop and a brief introduction for it. But we are interested in the installation section. Scroll down below and you'll find it. You'll need to follow these steps. First, open your command prompt or terminal and type and install this. You can see a reference picture for it right now. Next, in your web UI window, go to extensions and install from URL. Paste the URL of the GitHub page right here. Or if you paste the link in the description, that would be the same as well. Click install and give it time to install. Next, in the Install tab, scroll down and make sure Roop is selected. If it is, go and use this Apply and Restart UI button. And we are done. Scrolling down below, you can see the extension has appeared. Now we aren't done yet. We need the model that is used when swapping faces. To do that, you need to download this model. But this link isn't working, so a simple Google search for the model in Swapper 128 we'll give a download link for it. Go to the Hugging Face page, go to Downloads, and you can download it from there. Now let me clear off the prompts, add my negative prompts, and write a prompt for a woman in a beach. So to use this extension, first click on the Enable button right here. Next, we need to drag and drop our base image. Our output image will swap its face with this image. Now there are rules when selecting an image. To make it easier, I will select a celebrity as my face swap model. Now if you scroll down, you can see I've got different pictures. So how to choose a correct one? Well, I'll tell you what not to choose. First, we don't need pictures like this where the face isn't much of the main focus. We need something close to a portrait. Next, we don't need images like this with too much contrast or camera flash. We need proper balance. We don't need images like this, where the face is hidden between hands. And once again, in a picture like this, the face isn't the main focus. An image like this would be good. The face is the main focus. It has the right details, but its quality is a bit low. But let's try that out. If I click on this image and drag and drop it to my Roop window, you can see it loads. Alternatively, you can select an image from your PC, too. Next, all you need to do is hit Generate. Now you can see this get paused at 100%, and that is because this is where the face will be swapped. It first generates the image and then swaps the face. But now you can see the face only resembles our celebrity a little. And that is because it is low quality. Now if I select a more quality picture like this, drag and drop it, and then also use a different prompt just to show the difference, and then hit generate, voila, we get a nice face swap. Let's try that out again. This time I'm going to change the prompt to a Civet AI prompt here, and then I'm going to change my original image to a different celebrity. Once again, faces like this are low quality, but something like this would do it just right. And there you go. Awesome, isn't it? We got our face changed just like that. It has the prompt details and the face we provided. Now down below, you can also change what technique you use to change the face. 
Codeformer, or GFP GAN. But to be honest, it doesn't make much difference. If I change it and then generate again, you can see we get a face swap of the same quality. Now we are only using 50% of the power of this tool. Did you know you can even change expressions? If I type a different expression right here and then hit generate, I get an image to match the prompt. Yes, our open mouth keyword isn't being applied, but I'm going to change the prompt right here a bit to focus on our facial expressions. Hit generate, and there you go. This is perfect. Now let's take a look at the settings. This comma separated face number box determines which face you should apply the face swap to if you have multiple faces. Now if I load an image like this with two faces and I want to apply the woman's face, I go from left to right and select that face number. Right now the woman is in second position if we go from left to right. So enter two and hit generate. Whoops, I haven't enabled this thing. So enable it and hit generate. And there you go. You can see how the two faces look similar. The rest of the settings are very minor settings. We know what the restore face option here is. Restore visibility means how much of the face swap should be applied. Zero means no face swap, and one means a strong face swap. Upscaler determines if the image should be upscaled. So if you are using hires.fix, make sure to use this option. Upscaler scale should be the same as the higher fix value that you are using. And right here is the model we selected. And that is pretty much it for the settings. Now a practical scenario where this will actually be useful would be an image to image scenario. If I load up an image right here of a smiling astronaut woman and then open Roop and load my image and then change the denoising value to a lower value because we only want some minor changes in our artwork. And then hit generate. You can see we get a nice face swap. Right now you can see the face is protruding a bit outwards and this looks a bit like a bad Photoshop. In cases like these, always play around with a denoising strength, not the other settings. If I lower the denoising strength and hit generate again, you can see we get a perfect face swap. And that is it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. If you are a beginner or want to see a more simple web UI than this, check out my course where we use Focus and teach you everything about stable diffusion from scratch.